Whoop, not that one. Tom Segura, another successful Joe Rogan Circle comedian, is turning their audience against them. Months on from his little airport meltdown where a policy bag check led him to call everyone poor in a million different ways, people are still mad and won't let Tom forget about his outburst in any of his comment sections. Throw on top Nadav, Tom's main producer and editor at YMH, leaving the network to cover comedy drama on his own YouTube and Patreon. Fans aren't happy with the loss of the show's distant laugh that helped many jokes land a lot of the time. I, my mouth, when I was younger, was humongous. Yeah. And then I got so fat that now it's this tiny little fucking mouth. <laughs> Funny how much a laugh can add to the dynamic for the audience. Tom first appeared on Joe Rogan Experience episode number 8, early 2010. Your Mum's House podcast with his wife Christina P was started later the same year and funnily enough, it was also Rogan's idea to Tom and Christina to start a podcast at all. So between that friendship and the blow up of the format, they nailed the early gravy train. So how did a poor people rant splinter a hole in a podcast that's been running for 14 years? Well, there was also this. His new release, 69 Minutes, not only references the poor people washcloth tweet, but he's been that generous that fans can't even keep the special, only allowed to rent it for seven days, which is just laughable. Then to lie about it to Bobby Kelly, not the best way to dig himself out of this no. one. You own it? Uh, I think it streams forever. For a, yeah. for a long time? For you a say long. a long time, legally. That's great, man. It streams for a long time. The internet then called out Tom for the budget going towards expensive suits and watches and flying around for each skit rather than the quality. And Steve-O even alluded that behind the scenes at YMH might be dirtier than once thought. Is there any money left over? No. I'm guessing there's probably not that much money left over for the guys in the booth either. Tom and Christina just running around <laughs> on private jets. Uh-huh. Making fun of poor people. Yep. <laughs> God damn it. Now, while drawing the line at poor people for drama seemed a bit ridiculous at first, it wasn't received well because it just wasn't funny. There was no joke. He couldn't fly private that day, had to deal with the general public, then called the workers the old big C word for checking his bag before ranting all over X, later deleting the whole thing. All the balls and losers have the same response. Oh, you were inconvenienced. Well, you should accept it. That's what me and my dumb poor family have done for generations. This is why you're a poor. Or maybe it's dumb to have such high expectations for a corporation or its underpaid workers. Yes, some workers do power trip, but more realistically, they were almost certainly doing what they have to do to keep paying their bills. Yes, it's unlikely a known comedian with a long flight history has suddenly joined the enemy, but as Tom's father was the first vice president of investment bank Merrill Lynch, he probably doesn't know that most bosses would just sack you for not following policy and that being a poor means no nepotism to help you land another job. Calling your audience poor and stupid only seems to work when it matches your reputation and business model, not so much for an older comedian that isn't trying to funnel people into a course. <laughs> With millions of views across commentary channels like Too Lazy to Try, Podcast Cringe, Comedy Enforcement, Turkey Tom, probably Patrick CC soon, Tom is living a teaser of the Brendan Schaub experience, highlighting how quickly a social media audience can turn on its creator. But if you're going to abuse a service worker or someone on minimum wage, the joke's got to be crafted well to land with your fans who, surprise, are almost entirely working class people. Tom now probably realises that the rich and the elites he sees himself amongst aren't his fans, and he just doesn't have the background of a working man like Ricky Gervais who can get away with a I'm richer than you joke or two in his sets as he's earned it. Instead, this was just seen as an affluent meltdown by many online who tend to doubt Tom's claim of working all day and doing comedy comedy at night during his comma. Tom is right that mentality is important, but reducing a person's poor or rich status entirely to mentality isn't the full picture. You only have what you have because of fans, so don't talk about us like that. Yeah, but you're still a loser if you're thinking like that. I'm lucky to have you as a loser fan, but you don't have to be that way. You could be a winner. You know, you just gotta uh, change the way you think. There are so many professions that without them, the whole world would turn to Mad Max overnight. Way more important than a comic or a YouTuber. But a mentality change doesn't increase pay. How about comics attack the game instead of the player? Our system of society, if looking at all 8 billion of us, there's a lot more at play than just mindset. And the answer to why is always money. But even stranger is this article praising Tom's late father by slightly dissing his son in the title? Hospital leader didn't have to tell jokes to make impact. Then top that with Tom's recent video where his 79-year-old mother is taken on a peaceful helicopter ride. 
Just kidding, because Tom is dark humor expert, they decided risking a heart attack via stunt helicopter maneuvers was worth it for 500,000 views. Maybe his mum loves an adrenaline rush and is a good actor and it's all a bit. But seems like she was genuinely shaken and wasn't expecting- He's slightly leaning into the Paul brother sort of content, but the timing of doing all these rich people video activities right after the poor people rant. Yes, he's done some car videos in previous years, but goddamn, weird way to double down on a meltdown considering your best performing videos are still stand up or podcast related anyway. After decades of scripted and controlled media consumption and comics who could do the same set for years at a time, it's crazy to see just how important being deceived as genuine for a comedian today is. It's almost everything, as opposed to political figures or even the average influencer like Logan Paul who apparently can keep an audience no matter how unethical or allegedly illegal his actions become. While Tom is often seen as funnier than Bert, Brendan, Schultz, a common theme amongst all four is people pointing out their alleged privileged or at least middle class upbringing. Potentially the reason for these moments of separation from the common man. So you belong to a country club. Were you a rich guy growing up? Mm. Whereas the legends before them bridged the gap between all types of people by being of the people. Maybe the answer to all of this is Tom joined the war room after this episode. Yeah. Listen, we've had world famous comedians sit across from him. He's never spit coffee out of his nose. Uh, like, well, just... guys that are lost and then they walk into a church. This is what I needed. Yeah. I feel the same way right now. Abdul? Yeah, get the rocks. Get the rocks. That would definitely explain it, but I don't know why Tom would think he could pull off the Andrew Tate persona as a dumpy comedian. This comment from Costly Dugout sums up the Tom situation with some solid roasting. To me, he always seemed like a sh Louis knockoff, like Louis Light. The whole I'm a horrible person, I s***ed up inappropriate times, I jerk off a lot, and isn't it funny I'm a big fat piece of crap. Unlike Louis though, there's no art to how Segura does it. To me, the difference between Louis and Segura is the difference between Tarantino and people who try to write like Tarantino. But good god, Christina P is a sh unfunny hack mum comic sleepwalking through jokes that thousands of other nobody mum comics have already told. Jeez, utterly torching Christina. Their dynamic is decent for a podcast, and he's a capable comic compared to a lot of Joe's friends in a subtle, easier to deal with than Burt kind of way. But Tom definitely has some very similar characteristics to Louis C.K., who has been doing stand-up about a decade longer than Tom, and most would agree is on a whole different level in terms of comedic output. But considering your mum's house differentiated itself by poking fun at strange people online and turning them into what they coined as a YMH celebrity, they can't overreact now that some of the poking is coming their way instead. A little bit more in depth on the manuscript that I'm here to talk about, but nevertheless... Doesn't mean that I'm not going can read this exactly. and roasted by Quentin at the end of this thing. <laughs> Hate from Australia.